Hey, Shalom, Shalom. This is now Mom with the DC branch of the Great Millstone. Uh, here back for another video. Uh, first and foremost, call all your howl. By Shem Yahushua, by Shem Dash. Once again, double honors go out to the apostles, bishops, and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. All right. Salutations also go out to the fellow Akin that are out there on the highways and the byways, pushing the truth across the four corners of this earth while trying to wake up the remaining hopefully lack because times are very short. All right. Uh, it's going to be an interesting summer from here on out. Uh, unfortunately, we're in this demonic month of June with this uh, pride BS. But speaking on that note, this is related because the First Lady of Nigeria here in this video, uh, as the title goes, First Lady of Nigeria gives a backhanded comment to so-called black Americans while slamming Meghan Markle. All right, very interesting. And this is something we touched on in the main camp yesterday, uh, being that it's this particular month and all the <laughs> uh, things walking up and down the, uh, the street. Uh, but this is something that we stress often, whereas our people the so-called idols that are set up, the entertainers um, that are set up by them folks, the J-double-O's, I'm thinking in my mind particularly, the latest of which was uh, so-called Sexy Red, which she is not. Um, I could not find it, unfortunately, I looked for it. Uh, I saw an article somewhere where uh, there was this J-double-O that set her up, and this is a common thing in, let's just say, the last 30 plus years here, um, where our people could fill up the jails and, you know, this, this push for, uh, uh, especially in the music industry, um, gangster rap, whatever have you, um, where they sure did come after us. And it's usually with things that, where we excel at, how am I going to word this correctly, they take the things that separate us from them, alright, to where we excel, and they turn it around and use it against us, say the music, all the beautiful music that came out of, even before Motown, alright, <clears throat> what did they do, they twisted it, alright, uh, now it's all about calling the women hoes and, and bitches and then the uh, uh, homosex homosexuality crap creeped in there alright uh, this is what they do and like I say this is what people from around the world they're from the outside looking in they see this uh, apparently the majority of our people do not they just been conditioned to, you know, uh, crave that good job. They made money, their idol, and in doing so, the really important things that really separated us from them folks. Uh, that gap has ever been getting narrower and narrower uh, to the point where some would argue that we have become them. And it's not a good thing. Let's go ahead and play this video and you'll see what I mean. Um. Not too long ago, Prince Harry and Meghan Markle visited Nigeria to help celebrate the 10th anniversary of the Invictus Games. Now, they spent three days over there, and apparently while Meghan was there, she didn't have a lot of clothes on, and the First Lady of Nigeria did not like that at all. In fact, Senator Olareme Tinubu took to the podium during the celebration of her husband's first year um, in office as the president of Nigeria, uh, Bola Tinubu. She said this. Check it out. The message here is we have to salvage our children. You know, we see the way they dress. They keep forgetting that Nigeria, we are beautiful. 
the moment you can see what they showcase on the stage i said we are fashionable we see what is going on you know we are not having a met gala and everyone their nakedness is just everywhere and the men are well clothed so we have to do something tell them the way it is we don't accept nakedness in our culture they, that that is not beautiful it's not beautiful at all and they are all beautiful girls but they should be confident to know they are they don't want to be like even they are mimicking and trying to uh, emulate film stars from America. They don't know where they come from. Why did the American come here looking for Africa? That is something we have to take home with. And there is the backhanded comment. <clears throat> All right. See, here's the thing. Uh, <laughs> Meghan Markle. All right. Her father is an Edomite. You are what your father is, a so-called white man. All right. She's just dark complex. She's a chocolate-covered Edomite. That's it. It's as simple as that. have always told you all right, that it's so simple quit letting our enemy all right, fill your head full of his pseudoscience it's really common sense all right but she's right you don't well let me get some scriptures here because mm, going all the way back and this is something that I mentioned earlier but our people uh, getting society all right they want to please the oppressor but this is um, Exodus going back to the law statutes commandments which <laughs> this is why we're in the condition that we're in now this is uh, Exodus 23 and, and 2 thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Same simple enough, right? But again, with all the uh, things that are offered to you, alright, yeah, you know, don't don't worry about all of that. It, it, like the scripture says in Ecclesiastes 1 and 9, there's no new thing under the sun. Go back to all the captivities that we were in, mainly when we were dealing with Edomites, so-called white people. So from the Greeks on, particularly with the Greeks, what happened when you read 1 Maccabees, Maccabees period, but starting with 1 Maccabees, 1st chapter. All right, after Alexander the Great died, all right, uh, what happened? Uh... They no longer wanted us to observe uh, our customs, all right, law, statutes, commandments that were given to us specifically. No, we want to all be 
you know, one people. And therefore, you're going to worship what we worship? No. With severe penalties, of course, if you did not do so. In which, when you read First Maccabees, uh, the first chapter, they slew the children, hung them around the, the mother's necks if they had them circumcised. Uh, you know, yeah. So this is what we mean by she's saying that, you know, we don't know who we are. We're trying, we're out there on the highways and byways trying to get you to understand who you really are. Alright, it's like I can't give you a percentage, but enough people know who we are to where you can tell how this whole system, particularly here in America, how this whole thing is set up, this whole system, how it's rigged. There's ample opportunity for Jake to go off. And as long as we do that, you read Judith the fifth chapter, you'll understand. All right. They knew these things. They observed. They sent spies out to watch to see what we were doing. All right, are they observing the, the law, statutes, and commandments? If they are, we ain't got a chance. But if not, oh, now it's time. To, yeah, mm -hmm. they knew this. So with these people, which are our people, these Nigerians, all right, nobody wants what the majority of our people have become over here. They don't want that in their lands. What's so hard to to understand about that? A lot of our people are so gone, hence to two thirds. A lot of our people are so gone that even if you were to come into some kind of, I don't know, enough money to relocate, who's going to want you? Because you're still contaminated with the filth that is America. All right, and what it stands for. See, the thing is, with us being over here for so long, a lot of people, of our people, don't realize just how fucked up they are. All right, because they fit into this American exceptionalism, which they're not even talking about you to begin with, or us, I should say. American exceptionalism. That in itself pisses people off. You know, and they have right to do so. But that's that that hubris of, of America, that that pride. All right. And people look at us, and on the one hand, they understand, yeah, you know, what happened to you people. But then they pick the right ones that further their agenda. All right. And then people just like, you know what? Fuck it because they can't understand that so much damage has been done to our people mentally. The majority, um, I'm speaking about, uh, about being, well, when you look up colonial, perfect example, I just thought about that. Perfect example. Now you got other scriptures that go along with it, what I just read, I'll, I'll get back to that. But this is something every now and then I'll run across and I'll bring up as an example. This is exactly why I use this instead of um, the other, uh, which is called Stockholm Syndrome, because this goes deeper. This is called colonial mentality, all right? And this is what Dr. Joy, I, what's her, I hope I pronounce it right, her last name, DeGry, post-traumatic slave syndrome. This is what she was talking about here. And it says a colonial mentality is an internalized ethnic, linguistic, or cultural inferiority complex. And this is what people suffer from. Inferiority complex. All right. Um, have been demoralized to the point. Well, let's just keep reading. Uh, infer inferiority complex felt by people as a result of colonization. For example, being colonized by another people and gaslit. What do we mean by gaslit into assimilation? Perfect. Ga gaslighting is a colloquialism loosely defined as manipulating someone into questioning their own perception of reality. Part of that happened.
happened in what? Jeremiah 17 and 4, right? Let's get that real quick. Alright, everything was taken from us, and what were we told and said? Let's get that. You're African. You're black. This is Jeremiah chapter 17, and this is ultimately the Most High doing that for what? For our disobedience. It says, actually I can start at one, but I'm going to go right to the point. Uh, it says, and thou, this is what separates us, and is uh, one of the things that point to us being the real Israelites, as opposed to those other folks, because those other folks say what? We've known, we've always known who we were. Well, that's not scriptural. This is. It says, And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine inheritance that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in a land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. Discontinue. All right. Um, these curses, as it says in Deuteronomy. Just read Deuteronomy 28. All right, uh, and so you'll get a more thorough picture. Because for time's sake, I'm not gonna go over all that. I'm just gonna pinpoint some of the curses. But from uh, starting in the 40s, uh, 43, uh, the stranger that is amongst thee shall get up above thee very high, and thou shalt come very low. All right, and then 44 and then 45 about the curses. Uh, brought upon us alright and 46 about these curses sticking to us and therefore they will be a sign alright as to who we are who else fits that alright uh, let's see going back to this gaslit alright so we know that it's making you think that alright oh, not the movie <sighs> making you uh believe something other than what's truly going on. You know, uh, here it is. <sighs> how did they do this? See how they, they play games? Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Questioning your own perception of reality. Racial gaslighting, which goes like this. Yeah, we here in America, we got a lot of problems, but, you know, this is the best country in the world. Uh, um, Who's gonna treat you any better than, than than here or some other shit? Uh, yes, the you know uh, America. Yeah, we got problems, but you know, <laughs> yeah, and it leaves Jake and like thinking because he's believed all this propaganda throughout his lifetime about these other countries being so inferior to America. But then you don't look at one step in particular. The judicial system as compared to the rest of the world you have 2.3 million last I checked locked up here and that's almost more than the combined <laughs> I mean come on and then that takes you back to what was this country really founded on it was not equality what condition were our people in when all these well they make this great constitution and, and all this you know and then next month you're going to have, unfortunately, a lot of Jake's celebrating July 4th, which had absolutely nothing good, that is, to do with them. Hey, here we go. Gaslighting. All right. Uh, <laughs> colonial mentality. It says, uh, let's see, blah, 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 and into a simulation based on the belief that the language and culture of the colonizer are inherently superior to one's own. No, it's not. It never was. You had the illusion. All right, and that's because of the things, the lies, I should say, that are taught and to you. Remember, I mentioned propaganda from the time that you're wee little. All right, it's shaping of your mind, but it is not in a good way when you really think about it. He says, the term has been used by post-colonial scholars to discuss the transgenerational, that's another important word, transgenerational is the psychological 
I was talking about transgenerational trauma. I remember I was talking about uh, Dr. Joy DeGry, her book, uh, Post, uh, what, the, what the hell is the name of the book? Oh my goodness. Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. It's like it. Anyway, uh, psychological and physiological effects that the trauma experienced by people has on subsequent generations. Here's the difference between this and uh, Stockholm Syndrome at the base is because this is transgenerational. Alright? It says the primary mode of transmission is the shared family environment of the infant causing uh, psychological, behavioral, yeah, I, mean, I might as well go ahead and click, fully click on that. Um, behavioral and social changes in the individual. They bring up, always bring up this Holocaust bullshit, which has nothing to do with us. So for the people that happen to see this video, quit, because that's a ploy on their part. Quit feeding into that bullshit. What they went through has nothing to do with what we went through. All right. First of all, that is a lie. Second, actually this could be first, they were responsible. They provided the funding for the transatlantic slave trade in the in the first fucking place. Alright? Uh, uh, it is commonly, I'm right here now after decolonization, it is commonly used as an operational concept for framing ideological domination and historical colonial experiences. Uh, in psychology, colonial mentality has been used to explain instances of collective depression. Remember I was talking about our people being demoralized? Anxiety? And other widespread mental health issues in populations that have experienced colonization. I had to say this before I bring up my next point. Because we as a people never had the opportunity. Remember this colonial mentality. Never had the opportunity to heal as such. And that's by design. All right, never forget that. Now let's go back to the first lady here because she's talking about the difference between them and the West. She used a bad example in Meghan Markle because Meghan Markle really is not one of us. All right, it's just everybody. See, this is the thing with the so-called black woman. The black woman is not the black man. You are determined by the seed lying, which can only be, of course, uh, by the father. Women does not. Men beget, meaning they push forth the seed. Women conceive that seed. It's so basic. All right? So when we talk about uh, Jacob and all his sons, all right, the twelve tribes of Israel, how many children did Jacob have or father overall? It was 13 because he had a daughter, Dinah. So why is there not a tribe of Dinah? Because it's impossible. Alright, so let's continue on. We know who we are and don't lose who you are. God bless you. See, and they like to throw that in your face, but see, we're trying to tell you who you are. We're out there on the highways and byways every week, sometimes more than uh, once a week. And even with that, you got all these videos. So many that none of us can watch them all, can't even come close. So all that information is out there. All right? And I would personally recommend Great Millstone, but there are others that are, don't have a Great Millstone moniker but they are associated and meaning they teach like doctrine all right unlike how you I see um, uh, you you uh, <laughs> um, you know the <laughs> the ones all in black um, USP uh, I always get that twisted up but at G uh, OCC and all these others um, uh, what is that? Um, damn it. I can't believe I did this. Uh, you know, uh, Johanna's clan. Alright. But uh, General Johanna's people. Alright. Um, no. Alright. Totally going off. 
but uh, we're going to give you the straight scoop. And this is what we're trying to tell you. All right, come back in. We're trying to bid you back, bid you to the wedding. All right. And uh, like I said in my intro, time is very short. All right, because this devil is setting things in motion. He's well, way behind. All right, in his plan. So things are speeding up, and this distraction, or I should say, distractions (plural) with this Trump bullshit. It should be so obvious now that these people are on the left or behind all this because otherwise they can't beat this guy. But again, who knows? This might be uh, the plot from the beginning because who you're dealing with? A devil. Don't trust none of them. That's my whole point. All right. Uh, but let's see what she, what more she has here. But she, she is absolutely right. And you do not defeat your oppressor the devil, the wicked, the wicked, by being raunchy and um, trashy and, you know, no, you do the opposite, but these, we have to get why these things are happening to us, I just read, uh, or told you about, uh, or request that you read Deuteronomy 20th chapter, and it's all throughout the scriptures why these things are happening to us, but let's go to uh, Hosea 4. Start the top. All right, it says, Hear the word, and we touched on this also. Um, well, this is uh, Saturday before last. So it says, Hear the word of the Most High Yahweh, ye children of Israel. For the Most High Yahweh hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of the Most High Yahweh in the land. None. They've been given this false. God, this idol named Jesus. Hmm. Remember, I read you Jeremiah 17 and 4. Alright. We can go into the, the letter J not being, you know, used or just first came into existence in 1524. And it wasn't in, in print. Um, on a large scale until the, the early 1600s. Um, it is not in the King James Bible. Uh, I think we're talking about after King James died. So, I think he died in 1625 or 24, something like that. So, yeah. Uh, even though it was invented in 1524 it wasn't widely used till after 100 years later so uh, continuing on verse 2 it says by swearing and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery they break out and blood touches blood there is your uh, black on black crime alright therefore shall the land mourn and everyone that dwelleth therein shall languish with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of the heaven, yea, the fishes of the sea also shall be taken away. Alright, so when we bring up other scriptures, or we talk about certain events to come, like Jacob's trouble. Yes, any, when you talk about linear logic and things like that, it should be obvious that Jake is not in uh, by no means on the same level as our oppressor as I would go so far as to say uh, many of the immigrants that come over here it's, uh, it pertains to having the same resources on hand when shit hits the fan alright so when we talk about Jacob's trouble when it's first and foremost the scriptures uh, talk about Jacob's trouble think about this the wealth gap between, let's just say, Esau and and Jake. How much more wealth they have in reserve or on hand as opposed to, to Jake. So when we talk about Jacob's trouble, that's what we mean. They're going to shut down um, 
all avenues of help because when they go to this digital system, a lot of Jake don't have bank accounts despite the era, the time that we're in. Alright? Um, a lot of Jake don't have uh, simply put, just the means that everybody else is. And again, that was by design. So, following that, who do you think is going to suffer the most? I hate to get off into that, but still, you have to realize these other countries, as the first lady here of Nigeria, uh, they're looking. And they just shake their head, just like Lamentations, second chapter. You know, because this devil has done an excellent job in discrediting us. Like I said earlier, suppose you get some money there. All these videos you can look up about Jake moving back to Africa and encountering some problems and end up moving back. Why? Because you can't outrun the curses first and foremost. That's what generally the Deuteronomy 28 chapter is about. Here, and, you know, especially if, uh, verses 45 and 46, these curses are going to stick to you. And therefore, they will identify who's who. You cannot escape these curses no matter how far you run. No matter what country you go to to try to escape. Because they are curses. Continue on with the video. So you basically heard her saying that they do not accept nakedness. Uh, they know who they are. They are beautiful. And basically don't be like uh, the women of the West as she specifically called out that of Meghan Markle. Way, about, you know, about. why did she come over here? Yes, she was going over there to, to find out who she is because Meghan says that she discovered she's 43% Nigerian. So I guess she was on a, you know, journey of self, right? To learn that part of her. So I want to address this video in two parts. I want to say big up to the first lady uh, for calling it out, saying that we don't need to be naked. We uh, need to put clothes on, which is what it sounds like they do over there. Do not like uh, try to mimic those uh, stars in Hollywood or anything like that. I, too, believe that uh, a woman is more beautiful when she has clothes on. Uh, nakedness is not fashion to me. Scripture. Alright, and in that we go to what? Alright. First Timothy two and nine. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel with shamefacedness and sobriety not with broided hair or gold or pearls or costly array what are American women known for we can go all the way back to Isaiah which I am going to right now alright what did it say what was one of the again these curses why because of their their pride alright let's go on down here to 16 Remember I talked about the, I used Sexy Red as an example, but all these, you know, it's amazing to me that people, more people can't, uh, here, can't see that. It says, moreover, but you got little toddlers being, you know, our people think it's funny to have them um, emulating these pieces of shit that are set up, all right, to, to spoil them. Uh, Isaiah 3 and 16, moreover, the Most High Yahweh said, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, proud, and walk with stretched forth necks in one time, eyes walking and mincing as they go, and making a tinkling with their feet, therefore the Most High will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Most High will discover their secret parts. Alright, so you got to wear all these weaves because the curse, as it says right here, what? Uh, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. And these uh, 
immigrants, especially these Koreans, they get rich off of this one very thing here, which again puts a distinction and identifies you over these so-called pretenders because they cut their hair off trying to fit this curse. In that day, verse 18, and it's discovering their secret parts, scantily dressed, all right, uh, to the point where it's, you know, raunchy, all right, or none at all. It says, in that day, the Most High will take away the bravery of their tinkling or ornaments about their feet and their calls and their round tires like the moon that lost their shape. The chains and the bracelets and the mufflers, the bonnets and the ornaments of the legs and the headbands and the tablets and the earrings, the rings and the nose jewels, the changeable suits of apparel and the mantles and the wimples and the crisping pens, the glasses and the fine linen and the hoods and the veils. And it shall come to pass that, here we go, instead of sweet smell, there shall be stink. And for those of you that haven't experienced that, Mm. And instead of a girdle, a rent, again, the shape is just gone. And instead of well-set hair, baldness. And instead of a stomacher, a girdle, a girding of sackcloth, and burning instead of beauty. Making buku money off of us. Thy men shall fall by the sword, and thy mighty in the war. And her gates shall lament and mourn, and she being desolate shall sit upon the ground. Alright, and in the next chapter, chapter 4, it goes into, at that time, alright, uh, all this pride, uh, because you're not going to have those protections, you know, Isaiah 32nd chapter, all that. Uh, yeah. All this feminism crap, all this shit's gonna come to all. Uh, continuing on. To me, it doesn't really take much to put on two cotton balls and a band aid, right? Not really put on some clothes and make it match. Whatever you're gonna do and style it up, I think that's fashion, so I agree. The more. Oh, since she said that, all this, well, I can wear anything I want or nothing at all. You have to control yourself. No, you bear some responsibility in that. All right. And like I say, the times are coming where you're going to regret that. Because men, let me tell you something. And again, there's plenty of videos you can search. Men are fucking tired. They've had enough. They're saying that I always use it. I got off <laughs> from someone else who said, that which I can't correct, I don't protect. Ain't nobody in this day to come when this madness, all right, when it's just utter madness out here, ain't nobody got time for your fucking attitude and all that other bullshit. You're just going to be out there. Clothes, especially the sisters put on, the more beautiful uh, we become. Another thing I want to address is her backhanded comment toward the end of the video said that we do not know uh, who we are she's and right. why we go over there. So she's sitting up there from the pulpit, especially telling black Americans, "You, well, why y'all coming over here? Y'all don't know who you are. See, the backhandedness comes from... That it goes back to what I said earlier about while people trying to relocate your damaged damaged goods you fail to take into account like I said earlier the damage that has been done to you generation is why I brought up colonial mentality generation after generation after generation after generation being constantly under attack this devil that's over us never letting up you being in it and under it you don't realize it. That, uh, oh, y'all don't know who y'all are, like nana, 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 right? Don't come over here and all that other stuff. Now, I too found out that, that I have a Nigerian in my bloodline as well. Uh, I, I'm interested in going to learn more of Nigeria, but hearing uh, her say something like that, it doesn't sound like that's very welcoming um, or anything like that. So, yeah, I might have second thoughts of going because I too, sister, hey, how you doing? I know who I am too as a black American. I have full knowledge of self because I am born in America, was not born in Nigeria. And there's people that are doing DNA tests and stuff, finding out where their actual bloodline is. There's no harm in that, but 
we should take note of that, that some uh, people on the continent, not all, because I have been to the continent, uh, South Africa and uh, Senegal, very lovely, nice, warm, inviting people, did not have one negative interaction there. But when I hear a uh, language like that come from uh, Nigeria, especially from the First Lady, yeah, it makes me raise an eyebrow like, hmm, do I really want to go over there? But I want to also tell her, don't judge the rest of us by the actions of Meghan Markle. And I agree, she should have had on more clothes because I guarantee you she's not going to uh, Buckingham Palace with no clothes on. She's going to be buttoned up all the way to the neck, right? Did she ever Which is ironic considering that that's always been how they, the folks, have portrayed us, you know. But she's right in that she's not going to pull out some shit like that off in front of the royals. Hmm, so what is that really about? You ever go in front of the queen when she was alive like that? I doubt it. I think she was very prim and proper and all that, so she should show respect when she's going over to the continent. But again, don't judge all uh, black American women by the standard of Meghan Markle because there's a lot of us over here that have knowledge of self and know how to put on some clothes and be decent when it's time to be decent, right? So you and you get knowledge of self through these scriptures, not from that black unconsciousness bullshit. Anyway, y'all tell me what you think of that. And for more insightful commentary, please subscribe to this channel and my channel, The Demetri K Show, here on YouTube. Yeah, it's not as complicated as a lot of people will let on, alright? The simplicity in this, alright? But, <sighs> try as you might. Again, we've got Slocket, Slocket. She's Slocket. 21. Try as you might. Again, this is why the two-thirds got to go because there's such a thing as being too far gone. That's what that's actually talking about in so many words. All right, they cannot be redeemed. You do not want to be in that, that number, all right, uh, along with this devil, these, you know, these Edomites, you know. It's like that, that saying, it's a, uh, hell, all right, meaning that uh, the grave, that uh, condition of, of misfortune, well, in this case, <laughs> annihilation, all right, is meant for that, that damn devil and his people, all right, but for the two-thirds, that desire, all right, to be hand in hand, arm in arm with them. Hey, you got to go too. And that's Isaiah 13 chapter. All right, those that join hand in hand. All right, hey, you get that same judgment. Uh, so that's going to be it on that. I didn't, you know, First Lady of Nigeria gives a backhanded comment to Jake. <laughs> uh, that's the way, and it's by design. You gotta understand. Um, like I said, this devil has gone out of his way to give this certain image of us to the world. And our people just seem to go out of their way also to live up to that. someone said, you know, this lifestyle that's presented in the form of rap music, and so you didn't have to live that lifestyle, you chose to do that. You chose to get involved in selling drugs and, you know, the prison industrial complex, getting caught up in that, and all the murders and all that, you know. Even though that was presented to you, you still didn't, you still made a choice. Hey, so with that, this went far longer than I anticipated. <laughs> so uh, I just hope whoever views this is edified. Uh, again, our people got to get up out of here. We really do. We have to get the hell up out of here. Alright. This place is nothing but, um, what's that fancy word? It's uh, the bane of our existence. Death. Micah 2 and 10. Alright. This is not our rest. It never was. Alright, so uh, with that, hey, until the next video, once again,
小。